time to begin the fifth and final chapter of this game. And ultimately, we have completed all of the mini-games in this game. Well, with the exception of Lizzie's postcard hunt, but that's coming later. So, if you have been keeping up to date, you will know that we have declared three races against Chick before heading into the last Piston Cup race. But as well as this, we ultimately have three road races to get through. And as far as I'm concerned, this should also be our final set of road races in the game altogether. So let's begin now with changing the paint job scheme because I figure well. There is one paint scheme I have not used yet, and that's this one. Only going to take a split second to change over. Of course the other ones I need to unlock using bolt points, and obviously as you uh, might have guessed I'm not going to do that. But before we get to that point, I'm going to get some more bolt points to get me up to 170k. Hey, and now, Ooh. here we go. And there is Chick. How you doing? Good. Hey Chick. You ready to roost? Or what? Anyways, here we go. And yes, the Radiator Springs GP is officially a night race. I shall now hand this off to the cutscene. Once the game loads. Okay, here it is. Hey, what's that red light flashing in there for? Uh, dude, you're live on camera. I'm on the TV! Woohoo! I gotta call around him! Okay, lean back, son, so we can start this thing. Oh, sorry. Welcome to the charming little town of Radiator Springs. My hometown. For race number one of the first annual Radiator Springs Grand Prix. Expect some wide open off-road action today as the rivalry between Lightning McQueen and Chick really heats up. He's the ugly green car with the mustache, right? Hey, who you calling ugly? Spit cup. And the cars are lining up at the starting line now. Boy, this here is gonna be some kind of fun. Okay, folks, let's go racing! In the very words of Darrell Waltrip, May God forever plus his commentating soul in the commentary booth. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing, boys! Not gonna waste any time explaining the structure. And getting the burnout start, which apparently, as I've learned from an unofficial source, does actually work when you hold down X and square together. It is officially a night race. Probably even more exciting than the Bristol Night Race, as far as I'm concerned. And I should also mention, Darrell Waltrip does actually hold the record for the most wins at Bristol. Because he finished in victory lane at Bristol Motor Speedway 12 times. And seven of those twelve wins came consecutively. I mean, DW was practically so good at that half mile ball ring that they practically named a grandstand after him. I mean, there really was nobody else who knew their way around Bristol better 
than Daryl Waltrip did. <coughs> Who, by the way, is also known as DW. And to those of you who do watch me and are NASCAR fans, you, of course, will probably be old enough to remember some of the legendary calls Daryl Waltrip made as a flag to flag commentator. And this is a pretty close race, I gotta say. Pretty heated. Although, obviously, Chick's involved. And we've also got Fletcher among the contenders for the race win. Oh, shit. That did not go the way I was wanting it to. And looks like I completely missed the jump. But either way, there's still another lap to make up from that mistake. And didn't seem to affect me too much because as you can see there, the interval protrudes. as being the let alone feature of showing that I can fight right back and took me 3 minutes and 12 seconds to set my first lap as I'm now pulling away from the field behind me pulled out a 10 second gap now but I know that gap is going to shrink and that's a wall Well, good to know I had a huge lead before this happened. Could have chosen to cross over the bridge, but I didn't. And now, it looks as though this could potentially be another easy victory, depending whether I do or don't make any further mistakes. Glad to say I was able to rejoin the track. Haha! -ha. I managed to not reset myself this time in that one corner. Anyway, I now have a huge lead over Chick and Fletcher. Will I manage to hold on to this? For the purpose of recompense? Well, I hope so. But for now, I have a huge lead over Chick Hicks and Fletcher, and something tells me The gap is now only going to increase. Because that is just how good I am. Providing, of course, I don't make any major mistakes. Although I can technically afford a mistake or two because I am so far out in front now that the possibilities of me losing this race now, unless I make a slew of mistakes, is becoming more and more unlikely. Anyways, got a 16 second cushion over the second placed car, who I would assume is most likely going to be Chick, and got less than... 2,000 bonus points now. I now have over 2,000 bonus points. 2,050 bonus points to be... Okay, 2,250 
Okay, that's only going to increase. Anyways. Ha! Chick didn't even finish second. Something I was not expecting, but... Either way, easy win over Thatcher. Chick Hicks winds up third, ahead of Gerald. And it was El Guapo who came home in last. And a total of 25 seconds from first to fifth. And I had the best overall lap time by 14 seconds over Gerald. Anyways. One race is down. And now we must move on to our second road race of chapter 5, which I do believe is going to be a sprint race, but we shall wait and see. And yep, that is precisely what we are doing next, the Tailfin Pass GP. Which takes place all the way up at Wheelwell, and that will be coming in the next episode.